perfect. One o'clock in the morning. <laughs> well, you already know what time it is. It is the end of week number two in college football. We have plenty, plenty of things to talk about. Oh yes, you're going to hear me rant a little bit. You're definitely going to hear that. You're definitely going to hear some excitement from me as well. You're just going to hear all the things that have made it. This second week of the season, technically third week of the season, so special. First off, first things first is that BYU, yes, the Cougars, they will be joining the Big 12 in 2023. And Cincinnati, UCF, and Houston will follow them no later than 2024. So, um, there will be some exit fees involved. And again, we've all, there's been a lot of speculation as to what goes on the domino effect of the Big 12 adding these four teams. But it's okay. Everything is fine. Again, uh, I think the Big 12 will be fine. Definitely will be a good basketball conference for sure. Who knows about football right now? It's kind of iffy right now. But, I mean, things are looking fine. Things are looking fine. And, you know, these four teams here will definitely be getting more of that pie. The, the, the money will definitely be coming in. So how about some FCS upsets? Yes, we have two of them instead this week because there were a lot less FCS games being played. Um, Duquesne, yes, from the Northeast Conference. They beat Ohio. Tisk tisk. Tisk tisk, Bobcats. You gotta be kidding me. I'll talk about another Mac team in a moment, but there's also the bigger, more disappointing upset in all honesty. Is Florida State loses for the first time to an FCS opponent. Jacksonville State on a 59 yard Hail Mary in which nobody on J on Florida State's defense decided to play prevent defense like it was NCAA football 14 out there. Just an absolutely horrible way to lose. I don't, I don't, this is probably rock bottom for Florida State. This is probably it. This, something's got to be done. This don't make no sense, man. It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. I'm telling you. Like this, I thought this team was much better than this. You know, they they showed some promise against Notre Dame. You know, it wasn't. You know, it wasn't great. But I mean, at least you know we could say, hey, maybe Florida State will go back to a bowl game or something this year, or at least get four or five wins. But no, this is this is really really bad for the Seminoles. This is really really bad, beyond bad. I'm not even going to watch Florida State's game next week, so there, there's that. So, Florida State is in trouble. Florida State is in big trouble, man. Um, how about a cat which fell out the stands at, a, at the Miami-Appalachian State game, which Miami won that game barely. Um, and I'll talk, about, I'll talk more about Miami Monday. Man, but, uh, the cat fell out the stands, peed on, I guess, somebody or something or something like that, got caught by a dude, now the dude is viral, he's famous. Um, and the other, another weird story coming out from Southern Miss, they were playing Grambling State that day, or rather this afternoon, not this day, um, and a woman nearly gave birth there at the game, and like, the sections were blocked off and things like that, so... You know, just some weird, quirky things in the world of college football with fans coming back. <laughs> it's just, it's pretty funny. <sighs> Excuse me. It is one. It is after one o'clock, so I am quite tired. And let's let's talk about these games real quick. Let's talk about Oregon, Ohio State. The Buckeyes did not play like. A Buckeyes defense would, and I and I and I said this: the run defense was not there. And guess who ran all over him? C.J. Burdell ran all over this Buckeye defense, and Oregon gets a huge win for the Pac-12. 
huge win. This is probably the biggest win the conference has had in a long, long time. Just a huge W because it never seemed like the Buckeyes could adjust very well to Oregon just running the ball left the entire day. You know, Joe Moorhead was calling plays out there for Anthony Brown and C.J. Burdell and all the rest of the Oregon guys, and it felt like, you know, Ohio State couldn't stop him. It felt like they couldn't touch Anthony Brown. And, I mean, a critical mistake by C.J. Stroud late with a bad interception. And, I mean, I mean, it just felt like... It felt like Ohio State was going to get blown out of the water. <sighs> I mean, it, it, it just is what it is. You know, it, I mean, Oregon was up by 14 at one point, so... You know, it, I mean, it just, it just, it's just not the way Ohio State wanted it. They got to fix things on defense especially. I think the offense is fine, obviously, if, if Stroud can keep throwing for four touchdowns every week. You know, a bad interception here and there. But Ohio State needs to fix some things. Oregon's I'm still not completely sold on them, you know. But they really, really helped their case, and they just have to get through you know, the next couple weeks unscathed before big matchups start to rear their heads, you know, for the Ducks. So, how about Florida USF? Well, I mean, this was a blowout as expected, but now there comes a couple questions. For the Gators, does Anthony Richardson, who played very, very well in limited time, come in and start, you know, doing things for the Gators, or will Emory Jones keep his you know his starting job because yeah, I mean a lot of people aren't really sold on Emory Jones and I am also one of those people because I felt like you know he, he's had some time to play in the past couple years but I mean I definitely don't think this guy's a starter you know for a major college football program he just hasn't he just hasn't really done it you know very well the, the limited stuff that we've seen from him over the past couple of years, it just it just doesn't it just doesn't seem like it's a good fit for Dan Mullen, and they, and there needs to be something figured out because guess who's coming? Big Bad Bama coming to the swamp very very soon. You know, we're six days away from that, so Florida needs to figure things out. Notre Dame, oh boy, Notre Dame, this is this is. I genuinely don't know what's wrong with the Fighting Irish. They struggled with Toledo. They struggled with Toledo. Beyond a struggle. They barely scraped out a victory against Toledo. And if it weren't for ref ball ruining things as usual and pure luck, I don't think Notre Dame would have gotten out of this because there's because Jack Cohen even popped his own finger. You know, he, he had to get his finger popped back in because he dislocated it. And that was before the game when he touched out, by the way. Uh, the picker getting popped back in. So, you know, Notre Dame, I'm still very, very not high on them. There's there's a couple of big, big matchups for the Fighting Irish coming up that need... There, 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 there needs to be things that need to be addressed very, very soon for the Fighting Irish. They cannot have slow games like this. And... Oh, what well, was speaking of slow, as I keep yawning, could Stetson Bennett be the spark that Georgia needs? Because, you know, JT Daniels was out with an oblique injury, and, you know, he threw five touchdowns. Sure, it was against UAB, you know, I mean, again, UAB isn't really world beaters or anything like that, but. This is the type of stuff that Georgia needed against Clemson. This is the type of stuff that Georgia needs throughout the season to keep themselves, you know, keep themselves on pace, you know, trying to get it out. But you cannot go, again, like, like I said, you cannot go slow with the Alabama Crimson Tide. You have to punch them in the mouth. You have to punch them in the mouth. And if you can't punch them in the mouth, they're going to punch you in the mouth, and they're going to knock you out very very quickly we saw that with Miami if Georgia can't adjust it'll, the same thing will happen to them if they make it all the way to the SEC championship game you know so what about Texas A&M Colorado as we get into the later portions of the day here um, 
Hades King got injured. He got injured uh, something with his leg. He left. He was done for the day. And Calzada, you know, and the Ags looked horrid for 57 minutes in this game until Isaiah Spiller scored late. And this Colorado defense was just nasty out there. We're talking this defense was really, really nasty out there. They were all over this Texas A&M, you know, team for 57 minutes. And it only... It had only and Spiller only got the touchdown at the very end. I felt like I don't think he. It, it, it looked like initially people were saying he didn't get it. But he got it. <sighs> Excuse me. But he got that touchdown. He got he got his feet in and everything like that. Colorado's offense, however, was not was not. It was nasty, but it was nasty in a bad way. It wasn't nasty in a good way. It was nasty in a bad way. So Colorado just didn't have enough offense. See, they scored a touchdown early, but if but I mean they they just couldn't get everything you know together. They left some points on the board. So did A and M, you know, especially a fumble, you know, in the back of the end or not in the back of the end zone, but just as Calzada was trying to cross the goal line late. But I mean somehow you know A and M continues to. You know, win continues to win. They're setting up themselves up for another big matchup with Big Bad Bama, and I mean, Adams gonna have to fix some things. You know, you know, Haynes King. Who knows if that injury will last long or not? Because I mean, again, they again, A&M started sluggish. They stayed sluggish for pretty much the entire game with Colorado. And that can't happen against Bama. Like I've said with Georgia, that cannot happen with Alabama. They will punch you in the mouth. And you won't be able to get back up if you get punched in the mouth by Alabama. Alright. Iowa. Iowa State. This was supposed to be the game of the day. This was supposed to be you know, the game of the week. And it was not the game of the week. It was not. It was really, really rough. Let me tell you. Brock Birdie and Brees Hall looked bad out there. We're talking. They did not play a good game. We're talking Iowa's defense stepped up. So, so clutch defense. This was such a clutch defense. Four turnovers. Four turnovers. Forced by the Hawkeyes. They keep the Cyhawk Trophy for another year because that's what, like, five or six straight wins for the Hawkeyes over the Cyclones in this series. And I mean, I was just, man, to set themselves up for something pretty big in the Big Ten, they can keep things going. But, you know, they got to get that offense a little bit, you know, got to get that offense a little bit oiled up a little bit at the start. You know, getting that offense a little bit better. But the defense, defense is absolutely really, really good. Just absolutely really, really good, man. Really good stuff there. All right, let's talk about these late games. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let me, let me, let me, let me tell you something. I tired. The Longhorns losing games they aren't supposed to lose. When the Longhorns aren't good, that is absolutely not a good thing for college football. There's a lot of other teams that you can say this score too. Miami, Florida State, Tennessee. I mean, that Tennessee Pitt game was absolutely atrocious in all sorts of different ways. But I mean, you don't have, you know, some of these teams in college football that were considered good. Nebraska too, you know. And this was just absolutely terrible. I mean, Arkansas ran for over 300 yards against Texas. Bulldozed the defensive line. And the Horns' offensive line couldn't protect Hudson Guard. And Hudson Guard played so terribly. The play calling was just so... It was not there. It was Something was up tonight with Sark. I don't know what it was. And then Casey Thompson finally gave it. So... Remember, this was supposed to be Casey Thompson's job, pretty much all along. We all, we, most Texas fans expected Casey Thompson to get the job, and yeah, I, I was not. I, 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 legitimately being honest right now, I genuinely don't remember myself thinking, hmm, well, maybe Casey Thompson will get the job. 
I legitimately did not know who was even going to be starting until, you know, very, very late. I just kind of expected Casey Thompson to start. But, you know, what what now? What now for Texas? Because Thompson does have a little bit of a weakness himself. He hasn't really played that much. A lot of people say he doesn't have the arm strength and that he can only really run the ball. And that Card is the better passer. But Card did not look great against this crowd in Fayetteville. Arkansas tonight. He did not look good out there. You know, several, several deep balls that should have been caught were either not caught by the receivers or were thrown, you know, just a little bit too far or just a little bit too wide or just a little bit underthrown. So that can't happen. You know, we're already we're already getting my eight and four Longhorn predictions back up and ready. Just, yeah, this is, this is rough. I mean, again, Arkansas, very, very surprising team. It did not look like, you know, the line said this game would be close. They said the Texans would have, you know, they they would be at least six points, but obviously that didn't happen. I mean, Arkansas bulldozed the Longhorns tonight. Tisk tisk. Back to the drawing board for Sark. You know, gotta get things worked out. So I won't be talking about Texas next week. So you can hold your horses there. Um, Washington, Michigan. This was just another game where somebody got bullied all over the field, and it was the Washington offense getting bullied out there by the Michigan defense. And Michigan's run game really stepped up. Cade Mac McManera, you know. I was about to call it Marinara, but McNamara and, and all those guys on Michigan's, you know, offense were able to get things running smoothly, you know, just good enough to just whip up on Washington. And Washington's got to be feeling pretty bad about themselves right now. This offense for the Huskies is just not good. It's not good. It's still, you know, got this, you know, got this pre 2000s vibe with the way they run their offense. It's just not working anymore. It's they, they don't have they don't have the type of quarterback that they used to have. They don't have the Jake Brownings of the world. They don't have those guys anymore. You know, you know, it's just it's just really really rough for the Huskies. So what about these other late games? Very very late. Let's talk about these very very late matchups here. How about Utah BYU? First time in over a decade the BYU Cougars beat the Utah Utes. So Utah will fall from the ranks of the top 25 probably. Fumbles all over the place for the Utes and you know I'm just, I'm just thinking you know how in the world did Charlie Brewer get here? What did Baylor? I'm just thinking like whoa what, what is he doing here? You know but I guess I forgot because uh, I'm me and I forget things all the time. You know, Utah had a bunch of quarterbacks that transferred over. You know, and I was just like, wait, really? Really? That's really Charlie Brewer out there. It's just at Baylor. So I was just like, okay, okay. And, you know, guys like Micah Bernard didn't really get going until very, very late. But at the bye, that was already too late with Jaron Hall running all over you and throwing the ball all over the place. You know, they just, they, BYU kept taking advantage of Utah. We're talking, Utah made so many mistakes. We're talking you know, the fumbles, of course. We're talking, you know, some horrid, horrid coaching decisions by the Utes. We're talking, you know, just, just a bad, you know, state of mind that Utah was in, that home crowd out there in Provo was just, you know, eating it up, eating it up. I don't blame them. I'm thinking this BYU team will be ranked at some point. You know, maybe even this week they will be ranked so we can get another ranked versus ranked matchup in there. That'd be pretty nice, wouldn't it? That'd be pretty nice. So last but not least, Tanner McKee and the Stanford Cardinal after having, you know, just a rough first week out there in Jerry World came in to the LA Memorial Coliseum beat up on USC. We're talking Tanner McKee just kept picking this 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 Trojan D. He kept picking this defense apart. I mean, 
passes were being made. You know, obviously Stanford knows how to run the ball, but they've been running, you know, the offense that Harbaugh used to run back in the day. You know, for years and years, even you know, even when Harbaugh was there, you know, they've been running, you know, a West Coast style type offense, a pro stylish offense, for years and years now, and Stanford just kept chipping away at USC until nothing was left. And even even Keaton Slovis was looking terrible out there. You know, he contributed to the USC Trojans looking so, so terrible out there. With a pick six as well. I mean, just did, there was just no adjustments made. I mean, like I said, Graham Harrell is a terrible offensive coordinator. Terrible. And I know, again, I'll say it again, There's or there are UNT people that went to school with me that know this experience of being with Graham Harrell. He's not a good offensive coordinator. His air raid system is trash. Put him and Todd Orlando. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, Todd Orlando. That trash guy who just made Texas defenses look like tonight, you know, like tonight's Texas defense that showed up. It, it was shades of Todd Orlando out there. Get that dude out of USC too, and you can take Clay Elton. And you, well, USC fans already want to get rid of Clay Elton anyway, so there's really nothing I can say about him. But Harold is bad. Todd Orlando was bad. USC gonna probably get knocked out of the top 25 too. Just knock them out of the top 25, please. They they don't deserve it either. You know, just can we not? Keep ranking USC and Texas, Miami too. Don't don't rank these teams anymore in, in the preseason, please. Stop doing that. Stop doing it, please. I beg you. All right. Yeah, that's that's about it. Uh, I don't have any more notes here. So um, this week again was just another week of craziness. The craziness doesn't stop here. There are a few games I will be going over in week three. Um, at least eight. Yeah, eight, eight games. Especially the, the noon slate is a little bit more loaded. Uh, but, you know, there's a couple of games, you know, late as well that are going to be interesting. But mostly the, the early, the very early slate is going to be loaded with fun matchups for week three on September the 18th and you know again special mention it is it was 9-11 on Saturday so you know um, and as far as Air Force Navy goes Navy still pretty really bad they, they they're, they're not good they got blown out by Air Force come on now you can't have that and, it, and the Army was having trouble putting away Western Kentucky so you know I'll talk about Army and Navy, you know, again when we get to that point to the Army Navy game. But it might talk about the Air Force Navy game. I mean, not the Air Force Navy because that already ju that just happened. But the Air Force Army game, I might talk about that down the line. We'll see how these three teams play. You know, you already got you guys already know I'll be talking about Army Navy at the end of the season. You know, along with you know some FCS stuff. I mean, the FCS really, really got another got got another huge boost with these two big W's today. You know, I think that that's really one of the bigger reactions here is that Florida State just completely they 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 they've hit rock bottom. You know, like we could joke about Texas all we want to, or we could joke about Washington or USC all we want to, but Florida State hit rock bottom, man. This is this is beyond terrible. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so that'll pretty much do it. I'll see you guys tomorrow, actually, because the United Bowl for the IFL will be wrapping up, and I'll be doing my last This Week in Indoor Football for the 2021 season. And also, you know, that, that will be Sunday night. Monday will be the Week 3 preview. Tuesday will be the... Um, will be the recap of the NFL for week number one. Then week two preview will be Tuesday, well, not Tuesday, probably Wednesday, actually, I mean, Wednesday-ish, so, 
Wednesday or Thursday. So yeah, that'll, that'll pretty much do it from here. Um, again, hope y'all like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. There's 139 of you that are subscribed to this channel now, so go ahead and, you know, <laughs> you know, share me ranting about these, these, these teams that just aren't good anymore. I'm serious, man. This Texas losing just demoralized me. I don't even want to talk about it. Another Texas team disappoints me this weekend, man. So, so yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's all I gotta say. I'll take care. Have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow night for that United Bowl recap and everything like that. Yeah, peace.